What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and it is that time again. We are reacting to the official live. Well, I don't know why I say official. It's it's the live read of Tiger Rock, which was done on the Fredit Fredit Discord server. I cannot speak today. That is gonna be great. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be reading through Tiger Rock, man. I am so excited for this. It's actually been quite a while since um, since we read through Nexi. Um, which is funny because I haven't done my audiobooks yet, and I know about that, and I know I haven't done them, and that is coming very, very soon. I think it's going to be on my second channel, though, so make sure you check the description to go and subscribe to my second channel to see my, where my new audiobooks are coming from. Uh, I'm doing that for sort of, um, I guess, kind of for safety, because it is technically like copyright stuff, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, I, I'm going to have Nexi on my second channel. Uh, and all the other audiobooks from then on. But we're going to have reactions on this channel, I believe, so uh, stick around here as well. We're going to be reacting to the latest books that are live read on the Fredit Discord server, and uh, thank you to William Blaine Alton. I think you did the last one as well, so thank you for um, getting the books early and, and reading for us. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I am very excited for Tiger Rock, mainly because Mimic Law. Yes, we're going to have some Mimic Law in here. Because, you know, if you haven't read Storyteller, then you probably should before reading this. But, uh, just to quick catch you up, basically, the Storyteller inside the Storyteller tree was Tiger Rock himself. Or, well, I don't know what his name is, but it's the purple tiger with one blue eye and one green eye. And inside that tiger is the Mimic 1 program. And that is assumed to be Glitch Trap or this Charlie virus or whatever. Okay, whatever you theorize. Anyway. This is going to be very closely related to Mimic Law, so I am very, very excited. Hopefully we see Edwin again, I don't know about that, because it's about Kai, I believe, who is going into a VR experience. Let's just get straight into it, okay? So, uh, I, am, I am actually really pumped for this. So, uh, we're going to be reading through the preview as well. Okay, good. Uh, hey, Kai protested, are you trying to pull my arm off? Calling it, calling it right there, that's foreshadowing. Uh, at the end of the story, he's going to get his arm pulled off. If that doesn't happen, then, um, no, if that does happen, then you have to like the video. Anyway, stepping through, <laughs> stepping through the grand quadruple door glass and gleaming chrome entrance to the Freddy Fazbear Mega Pizza Plex, Kai inhaled the aromas of spicy pizza sauce and sweet cotton candy as he shook over his eager, amped up friend. Todd, as usual, didn't think Kai was moving fast enough. I'm not going to be reading every single little detail on this. I'm probably going to be skipping a few lines. Uh, hopefully they're not going to be that important anyway. Um, so they're the Timeless Trio, apparently. The two, or Kai and his two best buddies called themselves. Uh, face it, Asher said, you're just too slow. Have we seen an Asher before? I feel like Asher is like a, a name we've heard before. I don't know, maybe not. Uh, Kai had been born on Oahu. Is that a Hawaiian island? Am I, am I stupid? Oh, it says Hawaiian here. Uh, he spent the first seven years on the island with his native Hawaiian mother and his cowboy dad, <laughs> born and raised on a ranch in Wyoming. Uh, very cool, very cool. They'd been thrilled when it was built, but it was no longer new to Kai, Tol, and Asher. They'd seen the Blacklight Play Area for the little kids, which was also mentioned in Haps, I believe? One of those stories. But that could also be Lally's game, right? That could also be Lally's game. Climbing toys, slides, and foam building blocks set up around a glitter ball pit. It gazed up at the stained glass cupola that capped the center of the Pizza Plexus dome, which we've also seen. Uh, fairy tale like castle, theater, uh, cool kaleidoscopic spray of light that came through the stained glass. They'd investigated every single one of the game venues and shops and restaurants. This is definitely canon to the rest of the series. Um, you know, it's not in its own continuity. That's what I kind of mean. Uh, they'd eaten at least a dozen pizzas in the ne uh, flashing neon light. Uh, mirrored ceiling main dining room and they'd bought more of their fair share of Freddy's themed clothing and souvenirs. They'd driven the go-karts on the tracks. Cool. Um, Fast Freddy, Freddy's Fortress and an animatronic band. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely the same pizza plex. Cool. Cool. Good to know. Hopefully there's more connections to security breaches pizza plex then. Uh, in fact, before Kai went to sleep at night, he often closed his eyes and lost himself in an endlessly constant motion of the pizza plex's brilliant lights, cherry music and buoyant crow crowds. Um... He hates women and enjoys sci-fi too much. No, I don't think that's true. Uh, he's a modern Star Wars fan. Okay. 
Todd had been the first to call them the Timeless Trio, a name he'd picked because they didn't fit in with the rest of their sixth grade class. Time is a constant, it doesn't exist. The only real thing is now, he declared. Oh, that's foreshadowing, if I've seen foreshadowing. He tried to grab Kai's arm again. They're really, really pulling on his arm. They're really pulling on his arm. Just saying that, just saying. You have to like the video if his arm gets pulled off. Um, I predict Kai will lose both of his arms, not just one. Uh, the Storyteller's Tree isn't going anywhere. Oh, they've mentioned the Storyteller's Tree. So I actually haven't read Nexi yet, the story Nexi, but I heard, like there's one thing I've heard about Nexi and then it's, it also mentions the Storyteller's Tree. So Nexi is kind of important as well. Funny that I haven't read it yet. Anyway, as Kai followed Todd through the boisterous Pizzaplex crowd, he had to admit that he too was excited about seeing the tree. They hadn't been to the Pizzaplex in a couple of weeks, and in that time they'd overheard several kids at school talking about the tree that housed the Storyteller, a cutting-edge program that's supposed to feed storylines to the entertaining animatronics. Was that because the Storyteller was only up for like two weeks? It was something like that, I swear, like 10 days or something. I think the Storyteller tree was only up for like two weeks. Um, which is understandable because it's it's how the um, the Mimic 1 virus spread. Can you imagine the code that went into programming the Storyteller? Um, Asher had gone online to read up about the new Pizzaplex feature and they talked endless about it, um, using programming jargon that neither Kai nor Todd understood. I'm getting some under construction vibes already from like um, the programming jargon. You know that there was that one kid, forgot his name, in Under Construction, there was that one kid who, who just nerded out about all the technology uh, of the AI a AR booth in Under Construction, The World Celebrates You. Kai, who knew his main name meant C, was pretty relaxed about life in general. That's an odd thing to point out to him. Uh, he could go with the flow, something his mum always encouraged him to do. Also, he's Hawaiian-born. Uh, that was her nature. Kai's mum was an ER nurse, but somehow she never let the stress get to her. In Hawaii, his mum had literally ridden the waves. She started teaching Kai to surf when his dad had moved to the mainland to start up, uh, to run a startup real estate development company, and they'd moved here to a town thousand miles from the nearest waves. Kai misses the waves, but he also enjoys the changing seasons that this town has to offer. Um, cool. Kai hasn't left the island behind him, though. Looking more like a black-haired, brown-eyed and dark-skinned mum than his blonde, blue-eyed dad, uh, Kai also had his mother's short, slight shape, the squat appearance, combined with the Hawaiian shirts and baggy cotton pants, he referred to the solid colour t-shirts and yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. In contrast to Kai, Todd was tall, skinny and frenetic, with long, usually messy hair, nearly as orange as the average carrot, and the pale face painted almost brown by freckles, Todd stood out in a school as much or more than Kai did. Right, right. <laughs> He's a nerd. He reads in his free time. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's actually really funny. That's funny. Um, cool. And then there was Asher. If he hadn't been a total tech geek, Asher might fit in in school. Uh, average height and brown air, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. Um, loads of binary. So he's literally a nerd. Asher told Kai that it meant doofus, and that is correct, because these two are the same. Uh, <laughs> they do it to avoid punishment from the parents since they're calling each other names. Oh. Oh, that's kind of smart, actually. Zero, one, 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 zero, zero, zero. Um, cool. They were standing in front of the storyteller's tree, and it was enveloped in plastic with a rope barrier around its base. So wait, they're shutting it down? What happened? Oh, this is, this is right after the storyteller. Okay. What happened? Asher asked aloud to no one in particular. A middle-aged man wearing the Peterplex uniform of red shirt and black pants looked up from a sweeping confetti near the bulging, fibre-optic roots of the tree. There was some kind of glitch, the man said. It was just a glitch, Manny says. Um, he rubbed the rough stubble of his square chin, or on his square chin, and shook his head. It's only been up three weeks. There we go. And I hear they're going to take it down. Three weeks. If you actually go back in the story down and track the time, you'll find out the story ends three weeks after the tree was officially set up. That's pretty cool. The ending of a storyteller occurs on a Tuesday. I don't really care. The glitch in Nexi was Mr. Burroughs unplugging and beating the storyteller. Again, I haven't read Nexi, but I probably should. So I'm guessing Nexi is also related to this glitch. Interesting. Um... Kai could, wait, Kai looks at the tree through the clear plastic and it gives him the willies. 
He describes it as a phantom monster. Kai could easily picture the gigantic tree suddenly uprooting itself to stomp through the pizza plex. Hmm. But they don't know, they still don't know that Tiger Rock is inside the tree, right? They, they just assume it's the storyteller. Um, Kai, Tog was tugging on his arms again. He picked a, pa a baobab tree because those trees have such big trunks. True. Uh, a lot more support. Uh, they are usually referred to as trees of life, so that's probably something good to, to remember. Uh, Asher was saying, I think it was a great choice because the trees are the stuff of legend. A redwood tree would have been better. Oh, shut up. <laughs> but redwoods have big trunks too, and at least they're American trees. Why does it have to be American? Asher said. Your shoes are made in China. So what? My shoes aren't a tree. <laughs> I love this story. Why pay a bunch of writers when you could build one story creation program? Asher is Netflix. No way, a computer program can't take the place of a writer. There's no way a program could be advanced enough to replace people's imaginations. Yeah, and if you've seen Black Mirror recently, then uh, you might understand why this is a bad idea. <laughs> I guess. Um, Asher is quoting Mark Twain. Do none of you see a scene? Of course I know who Mark Twain is. Asher shook his head. Mark Twain said it a long time ago. There's no such thing as a new idea. Humans may like thinking their, may like thinking their imaginations are all that, but really nothing's original anymore. It's just retelling old stories in a slightly different way. Exactly. That's why having a computer program do it is so brill. I don't know. Well, kinda. Because if you think about it, AI is the same as our brains, really, in in the fact that we hold a lot of information. And our new ideas, our originality, comes from different pieces of that information and we are generating it into something that is supposedly new. But it, really it's just a lo load of old ideas uh, that has kind of stemmed up and, and connected into one one kind of subfolder, I guess. Uh, and I, th I think that's how AI does it as well. Uh, I mean, I'm not an AI pro, but you know. Um, they can't check out the tree, so they're heading to the VR booth instead. So how is Tiger Rock going to be in the VR booth when Tiger Rock is in the storyteller tree? That's something I'm curious about right now. The pizza plex is described as a big pizza with the storyteller tree, the big theatre, and the kids' play areas in the centre and the VR booths on the far side of the tree. Um, glancing to his right, he looked up at the purple branch that, stemmed, that stretched out over them as they passed the roleplay area. Roleplay area, very cool. Um, they joke, they joking about a mythical rainbow world with green pizza and yellow cookies. Dude, no one took this tree design seriously. Right. Uh, they're discussing the meaning of dreams because Asher had a dream where Moss took over his house and attempted to eat him. Foreshadowing? Wait! Is that a... <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be so... <laughs> You're going to hate me. Is that a parallel to Under Construction? <laughs> you know Under Construction where the jelly comes into the house and like engulfs... Um, oh my gosh, what, what was her name? I forgot her name. It engulfs her. That's, that's really strange that maybe that's a parallel. I don't know. Um, but dreams, huh? Dreams. Dream theory? Kai forced his short legs to move fast enough to stay with his friends. I've been working on lucid dreaming, Kai said as he walked. You know, being aware that you're dreaming when you're dreaming. I've been playing around with it. And I've trained myself to wake up just by saying to myself in the dream, wake myself. I just have to say it a couple times and I can get myself out of any dream like that. He snapped his fingers. You could try, Todd, if you have a scary dream. You're weird. He's just the most normal out of the tree. Out of the three, sorry. That's weird, man, because, um, again, in Under Construction, we had that guy that I mentioned, who's really nerdy and nerds out, and he was talking about quantum Im immortality and parallel universes and stuff like that, and that really, really tied in with uh, Under Construction, because quantum immortality is essentially you are experiencing the, all of the parallel universes in which you live in every, in, in every decision. Um, I don't know if that was a very good way to explain it, but essentially Maya, that's her name, was kind of living even though her soul was in an arcade machine, but in the arcade machine she was engulfed by the virus or whatever and she was just kind of in a blank void, in an empty void. She was taken over by all of this kind of um, cancerous jelly. <laughs> so 
that the, the fact that that science at the beginning of the story kind of tied into the last part of the story um that's really cool and i feel like that's what we're going to see here with kind of lucid dreaming it kind of has to tie in at this point right i feel like we've got a lot of foreshadowing so far um i'm really excited to see where this goes um Kai shrugged he knew asher and todd didn't get his interest in the spirit world whatever kai when i see them on the flip side uh oh sorry that wasn't part of the quote Hey, look, Todd pointed. The AR booth has a special thing today. <laughs> he saw... Wait. Phasma Entertainment really removed Maya's corpse from the AR booth and went, Yeah, the problem is clearly the current program. We should change it. Oh. Wait. Did they... No way they did that. He saw an LED marquee that read, Today only. See the Peterplex 10 years from now. Take a peek into the future. There's the time mentioned, they're time traveling. Okay, so yeah, there we go. Wait, 10 years in the future? Surely it would be ruined, yeah. The AR unit reminded Kai of the glass domed, uh, sorry. The AR unit reminded Kai of the glass dome display case that held his mom's ter terrarium of Hawaiian plants, a little bit of home, she called it. His mom's terrarium had a wooden base, but the AR base was bright red. And instead of encasing plants, the AR unit's glass dome held one large gold chair that looked like a plush gilded throne. The AR, oh my gosh, sorry. The AR user sat in the chair, a boy Kai recognized as being a year ahead of him at school was in the chair now and wore a net like headband that was covered with a woven mass of sensory nodes. The headband was what made the Pizzaplex's AR so awesome. It worked with the user's own senses so that the AR experience felt totally real in every way. Wait a second. Wait a second. So this is the AR booth from under construction, but it's no longer the world celebrates you. It's come see the Pizzaplex 10 years in the future. What the hell? What are Fazbear Entertainment thinking? No way someone died in an AR booth. I mean, I guess it was under construction. No way someone died in the AR booth. And they were like, nah, 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 mate. It was, it was, it was a faulty program. We need to put the Mimic 1 Pro... That's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. Oh, we are seeing under construction except it doesn't get corrupted because it's under construction. It gets corrupted because Mimic 1 is in it. And that's where Tiger Rock is going to show up. Oh, that's amazing. If that's what happens, that is so cool. That is great storytelling. Okay, I feel like that's what's going to happen. I love how we get to see the development of the Pizza Plex over time. It's great. Kai's eyes widened as he looked out at an even brighter and shinier version of the Pizza Plex than he was used to. Sleeker, flashier, and noisier, this Pizza Plex was even higher tech than the current one. It was also packed with hundreds of adults and kids dressed in mind blowing clothes. The future Pizza Plex's patrons were wearing screaming hot colours at least three times brighter than any Kai had seen before. The colours were so electric that they almost looked alive. Hmm, the colours were so electric they almost looked alive. <laughs> that's that is a funny wordplay right there that's great um the clothes are illusions they got spider-man 2099 clothes on um okay there's a bullet train roller coaster it's flying he's in the ar booth but he's calling it vr okay someone jostled kai and he grinned at the extraordinary realism of the vr experience yeah that's weird that they're calling a vr now but whatever he pulled his attention oh no because it is it is a vr experience in the description of the story it is vr so maybe we aren't actually in the ar dome i don't know he pulled his attention from the roller coaster and he blinked in surprise he was looking up into the astonishingly real looking eyes of a future version of glamrock freddy hello there i can't do a good I, I can't do a good Freddy accent, okay? Can't do a good impression. Hello there, Freddy said. Uh, hi, Kai said. He goggled at the tan bear standing in front of him. Whereas the animatronic performers in the present day Pizza Plex were made of smooth metal, all their costumes and features painted on, this animatronic, though still metallic, looked more like a real bear, or sort of real bear. Glamrock Freddy still had the wide face protruding around uh, protruding round ears, huge eyes, and massive toothy smile of the Metal Freddy, so he didn't look like any bear you'd find in nature. But his fur and his features, his mouth, nose, and eyes were sculpted of metal in such detail that they looked like real fur and real eyeballs and stuff. Over the real bear metal fur, 
Glamrock Freddy used, uh, wore his usual costume, but this costume wasn't painted on. Instead of a metal black top hat welded to his metal head, Freddy's hat appeared to be made of real black felt. He also wore an actual fabric shirt with the light blue lightning bolt emblem, leather shoulder pads and leather leggings. Okay, cool. So, a really realistic version of Glamrock Freddy, I guess. So, I guess this is kind of, um, blurring the line between robots and, and humans as well. Um, or, or, or simulated, you, you know, like, re augmented reality, right? This tiger, no, not this tiger, this Glamrock Freddy isn't real, but he is real. He, he's augmented. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but like, it is blowing this kind of line between reality and augmented reality, obviously. Uh, that, if that wasn't obvious enough. Uh, Kai, that is a great name, Freddy said. Freddy dropped Kai's hand and put a metallic paw on Kai's shoulder. How about I show you around? We have lots of things to see in the pizza plex. Um, when Freddy noticed Kai's upward gaze, Freddy said, A state-of-the-art force field protects the pizza plex while providing access to fresh air and a view of the pretty blue sky. <laughs> Wait, a crow lands on it and it looks like it's floating. <laughs> That's funny. Wait, so it's literally just an open area that looks like it's invisible and, and things can land on it? That's so funny. Um, the tables are now strange round shapes that remind Kai of amoebas. Legless tables. The cars in Roxy Raceway had lost their tyres. They skimmed along the crystal track like the way Kai had seen in movies. Airboats grazed along the surface of the water in swamps. The cars had been completely made over and streamlined. They appeared almost like domed tubes. Passing Bonnie Bowl, Kai watched balls that looked like spinning supernovas rocket along lanes so bright he had to squint. The animatronics interact with kids more. The animatronics interactions were basic and a little stilted, kind of like how Freddy was talking to Kai with no contractions and speaking a little too flat to be normal, but it was cool that they were chatting. Here are our newest additions to the fun, Freddy said. He led Kai past an African safari ride that looked super realistic, scarily so, and a long flume ride that had rocket-like contraptions jetting through churning waves. Then he continued on toward an, er an area labelled Tiger Rock Trampoline. A tiger Rock Trampoline, okay. Um, that's interesting, because this isn't actually 10 years in the future, this is an augmented 10 years in the future, so it, I guess it's what Fazbear Entertainment envision as being in the future, but we know that 10 years in the future, like, the Peterplex definitely wasn't open for 10 years, I don't think it was, it could, it could have been, but I don't think it, it was. Oh look, Freddy said as they approached an enormous space filled with dozens of delighted kids bouncing around and doing somersaults. It is Tiger Rock himself. He's actually called Tiger Rock. Hello, Tiger Rock. Come meet Kai. <laughs> it, it feels so weird. It, it feels like, hello, Tiger Rock from the hit, <laughs> hit Five Nights at Freddy's series, Tales from the Pizza Flex. Come meet Kai. Anyway. Kai raised an eyebrow when he saw a huge flowing white robe covered in sparkly sequins and crystal beads that had the same motion-like quality of all the other clothes Kai had seen in the future Pizza Flex. Um, metallic white tiger, realistically hair-like as Freddy's. Oh, okay. The baubles looked like they were dancing and twirling, a gold medallion hung around the tiger's neck. Hey there, Kai! Wait. <laughs> hey there, Kai, or hey there, Kai? No, that's better. Hey there, Kai, Tiger Rock said. Tiger Rock, at your service. Freddy took his top hat off and tipped it toward Kai, who lifted a hand to wave goodbye. Um, Tiger Rock leaned forward and studied Kai with far more interest than Freddy had shown, more interested in fact than anyone had ever shown Kai. Oh, he's getting connected to him, okay. Tiger Rock's gaze was almost searing as Tiger Rock examined Kai from head to toe. Finally, Tiger Rock reached out and took Kai's hand. Um, cool. It's super great to meet you, Kai. Aloha and... <laughs> Awinala. Wow, I... I don't know it. I don't know Hawaiian. Apparently, I know hello, aloha. That's the only a Hawaiian. Yeah, that's the only Hawaiian. Hawaiian. That's the only Hawaiian word I know. Aloha. Hello to you too. You speak Hawaiian. I know a lot of things. Oh, I love learning. <laughs> this is so good. This is great. Oh, I love learning. Tiger Rock said, "I'll learn anything I can." <laughs> Oh, it mimics everything. It learns from human interaction. That's brilliant. He leaned down and cocked his head. 
It's all in how you pay attention and take in what you see and hear. You feel me? That's so creepy knowing the full context. That's so weird. Unlike Freddy and all the other animatronics Kyle ever heard, Tiger Rock had some flair. Not only was he more fluid, speaking more naturally with contractions, he also spoke with a little bit of swag. <laughs> like a DJ on the radio. Uh, would you like to learn something? Tiger Rock asked Kai. Um, <laughs> Tiger Rock teaches Kai how to rip their limbs and heads off. Tiger Rock leaned down and lowered his voice to an I've got a secret whisper. I can show you how things work around here, Tiger Rock said, cocking his head and studying Kai like he was the most fascinating boy in the world. Um, we don't really need a description, so I'm going to skip that. Remember to use the Afton star instead. Don't star spo Oh, I guess when you star them, then they go into the star board, and then, people c then everyone can see them, but you don't want spoilers. Anyway, irrelevant. Tiger Rock wrapped a humongous paw around Kai's left arm. The animatronic tiger squeezed his metal paw pads around Kai's yellow and purple Hawaiian shirt sleeve. The pressure was steady, but not uncomfortable. Um, futuristic conveyor belts, all manner of robots, large and small, human or animal shaped and boxy utilitarian shaped rode the belt. Those are the helper bots. Oh, ah, oh, they aren't staff bots. Oh, um, I... Okay, his name isn't actually Henry. <laughs> I I was a I was a bit conf like, I get I we've had this um, I think we've had this talk before with the live reads. It's like if you're gonna do a live read, it's fine to make jokes, but like, it's kind of difficult to read when there's a lot of jokes going on that um, kind of interfere. It's all good. It's fine. I'm just, I, I get confused very easily and I, I have to like make sure I'm properly concentrating to make sure that I'm not missing something as big as, as, as big as Henry. Uh, anyway, sorry. The robot with a broom lifted a spatula shaped appendage. She made a funny burping sound three times. Right back at ya. <laughs> I know all kinds of language. If it exists, I can learn it. Wow. Wow. Okay. At the, at the bend in the hall, Tiger Rock once again gripped Kai's arm harder than before. Kai winced a little but didn't squirm. Yeah, the arm, the arms are definitely coming off. The arms are definitely coming off. Wait. Wait, so it is actually called Henry. He waves at a triangle. I, I can't tell if it's Henry or not because, you know, we didn't... You didn't, um, clarify. So is his name actually Henry? I can't tell. <laughs> I've just been informed that some people think the Henry bot means more than it actually does. So was his name actually Henry? This triangular shaped robot carrying a tool that looked like a fancy broom. I don't know. I'm going to leave it. Uh, I, I just, I feel like it could be Henry, but I don't, I don't even know if that would mean anything at this point. Anyway, it's just a random janitor. I don't, I don't care. Okay. Anyway. I like to go all over the place. I can be everywhere. That's pretty neat, Kai said. Um, <laughs> check this out, Tiger Rock said. With his free paw, he pointed at a gleaming s silver circular slide that wound around a metal platform lift, which looked like a moving staircase, sort of like an escalator, except none of the steps were attached to one another or to anything else. They seemed to hover in the air. Each step ascended diagonally to an upper floor Kai couldn't see. The slides... Empty at first, but then an animatronic rabbit that looked like a futuristic relative of the Fazbear character Bonnie came skimming down the slide. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this is going to complicate things. Um, that's the only time he's mentioned. Oh, boy, that's weird. That's so, so strange. I, I think maybe we're all thinking um, like Spring Bonnie, but I don't think it is actually Spring Bonnie. Anyway. Tiger Rock then leads Kai back out into the Pizza Plex's main walkway to try out the super slide for Pizza Plex visitors in which they ride a slipstream. Tiger Rock turned to lead them back to the Pizza Plex's main walkway and when he did, Kai pulled his arm <laughs> from Tiger Rock's grasp. It wasn't the robotics tiger's fault. He probably didn't know his own strength, but Tiger Rock's clamp-like grip hurt. Yeah, they literally aren't hiding it. Like, the arms are definitely coming off. The tiger seemed to be obsessed with Kai's arms, as if he was trying to figure out how they worked or something. 
That is strange. That's strange. As he stepped into the crowd, though, Tiger Rock once again took Kai's arm. Tiger Rock was now yanking just a little on Kai's arm. Um, Tiger Rock squeezed his his arm uh, his arm longer, or harder. Sorry. Forty pages left. Oh my gosh, we are nowhere near through this story. <laughs> I need to go quicker. Uh, Tiger Rock is allowing Kai to cut in line while the pain from his arm is bringing tears to his eyes. He's led him to the top of the super fancy slide and something pops his bicep. Kai breaks free and shoves the kid away from... I'm hurt. My my arm hurts right now. Uh, in order for him to get away from Tiger Rock. That's a boy. It's Kai. Um, okay, Kai feels sort of bad because he didn't think Tiger Rock is intentionally hurting him. But he is hurting, so he plans to hide in Gator Golf. Gator Golf is about the same. It's jungle theme and includes moving animals and reptiles though. Um, the ponytail employee flashed Kai a smile, stood and hurried away. Have a great time today, she called out as she went past. She had brown hair. Okay, it's not Vanessa. <laughs> he's realising he's not getting help because it's a simulation. He feels like it's he's in a fever dream or a lucid dream and is sprinting all around Gator Golf to hide. He hides behind a black crocodile at the ninth hole, but Tiger Rock finds him. Are we playing hide and seek? Ah! <gasps> <laughs> That's brilliant. That's so good. Are we playing hide and seek? Tiger Rock asked. I know how to play. I learned it a long time ago. <laughs> this is so funny. This is so good. Um, wow, that's brilliant. So if you don't know why I'm screaming there, it's because um, in the Mimic, in the story of the Mimic, which we haven't technically done an audiobook on yet, but I have done multiple videos on. Uh, in the Mimic, we do hear about the Mimic, or the Mimic program, or, you know, the Mimic that was built for David, playing hide-and-seek with David. Um, and, and, and that's why it knows how to hide in places, and then to stab people in the back, you know? Anyway. As sci-fi-ish as the rest of the pizzeria, the restroom had faucets suspended in mid-air, which flowed into a glass tr trough. Behind the trough, the restroom contains silver pods instead of stools. Okay, so there's a polished silver toilet. We don't need to know about that. He begins to think about the present Peter Plex and his friends. Tiger Rock. Yep, he does that. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Wait, okay, so Ding, right as the Tiger Rock clamps over his biceps, which is very painful for Kai, Ding, time's up. Um... His bicep is bruised. He tries to tell the attendant about what happened, but he doesn't believe him and just wants to be a creep, spying on hot singles instead. Okay, he's just staring down this random blonde lady. Okay, Kai decides he wants to leave now, and while Asher and Todd decide on a movie to rent, Kai zones out, clearly scared by or scarred by the experience. On Saturday evenings, when the weather was clear, Kai's family hung out by the fire pit in their backyard. The house was surrounded by tall elms and maple trees, and it backed up to a river. In the backyard, they were sheltered from the rest of the neighbourhood, and they were insul in insul insulated, not insulted, from traffic sounds on the street. Whenever they were tucked in the back, it felt like they were camping. Kai and his family would sit by the crackling fire, inhaling its sweet smoke, listening to burbling river and rustling tree branches. They would talk about the happenings of the previous week, and they'd also tell stories. They'd watch the sunset, or they'd stargaze, depending on the time of the year. Okay. Kai and his dad had been sitting by the fire, silently watching the sun start to sink toward the distant rolling hills. His mom and Malaya, not Malaya, but M Malaya, had been inside fixing Elliot, Malaya's favourite stuffed animal, a bedraggled plush elephant. At least it wasn't a tiger. Malaya squirmed, settling in. Her white, her wild blonde curls, which always flew in multiple directions around her face, if not contained in a ponytail or braid, engulfed um, Kai's face. Some of the strands got in his mouth. Kai spit them out and pulled his head back to avoid getting consumed by her mango-scented hair. Okay. Unlike other kids Kai knew, who talked about how annoying their siblings were. Kai loved his baby sister. Five years old, Malaya was sweet and funny and loving. She was also demanding. Every week, they tell Malaya a story about the adventures of Elliot the Elephant. But after what Kai went through, he just feels tired and he doesn't have the energy to do it tonight. Kai hugged Malaya. I'm sorry, Mally, but I think I'm going to bed. Of course, Kiki, are you coming down with something? Kai's mum wasn't the kind of mum who hovered and worried, but she... 
but when she used the Hawaiian word for child, Kai knew she was concerned. Uh, as one of the timeless trio, Kai didn't, uh, Kai didn't dwell on the past. What was done was done. He was moving on. Very nice, very nice. Um, this is reality, he reminded himself. Tigerok isn't real. So, quick question. Is he now in the simulation still? Is he still in the simulation? That's a, an interesting question because we've already seen that in Under Construction. Would Scott Cawthon do that again? I don't think he would. But at the same time, how is Tiger Rock going to come into present day? Into the present day, you know? I know Tiger Rock already exists, or the Tiger Rock head exists in the storyteller. But how does Tiger Rock appear in the present day, like the description of the story says? I feel like he might still be in the simulation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if they would do that again. I don't think they would. It's strange. This is a strange... We'll, we'll have to see where Tiger Rock comes in from, and then we can make our mind up. Um, okay, I'm a beard feeder. Okay, there's an owl. Owl feathers didn't react to light that way. Metal did. Ooh. Kai was looking at a metallic owl. One shape. One sculpted like the animatronics in the future pizza plex. Uh-oh, so maybe he is stuck in the simulation still. Oh, its head turns to face Kai and its eyes open. Kai gets jump scared by this and the window slams on his arm. His arm is in bad shape. He tried running while he was trapped by the window. His shoulder is sore, but his arm moves okay. He looks back and the owl is gone, but Kai doesn't feel relieved. Because the eye, the eh, because the owl that had crouched in the bushes below Kai's room was definitely not some toy or yard sculpture. When it had opened its eyes, Kai had clearly seen that the owl had one emerald green eye and one bright blue one. Uh. <laughs> okay, Todd, whose own parents were total workaholics who tended to ignore their child most of the time, has thought this is rad and has gone into it too. So they go in on quests in town um, on Sunday afternoons. They've gotten tons of treasured from this, like concert tickets, cookies, CDs, and even money. The owl has given Kai severe nightmares that he had to force himself to wake up from three times. It was a nice day. Spring had finally settled in for good and the days were getting warmer. The soft blue overhead held wispy white clouds. Normally Kai would have been happy to be outside on a day like today, but right now the open sky somehow felt threatening. He felt exposed. Hmm, he's getting very paranoid. Um... Quoting this because once again, tales keeping consistent. Next year is also in spring. That's interesting. Um, I feel like tales is very well thought out, and I feel like they do actually like Scott Cawthon on his wall or something has a tales timeline. I feel like that is true because everything does seem to be very consistent uh, in tales. The first clue leads them to Old Man Gruber's farm, who is known for his unbaled hay. In search for the next clue, on their way that, on their way that passed by, Mrs. Nelson's house. She's a widow who made sure every way away of her thick green grass, flower beds, and perfect white fence. That didn't make any sense, but yeah, okay. Uh, by the flowers is a cat, but it wasn't a real cat. He could tell it was made of the same detailed metal he'd seen on the future Pizza Plex's animatronics and on the owl in his backyard. Is this connected to the Mimic 1 program? That's my question. I feel like it could be. I feel like it very well could be connected to these animals all have the Mimic 1 program in them, or there are multiple animatronics now that have Mimic 1 program and are following Kai for whatever reason. Something like that, or we are in a simulation. Um, like the owl and the tiger rock, the cat has one green eye and one blue eye. Kai's left arm shot between two of the fence boards and his bike came down on top of him. Todd and Asher tried to help him up, but his arm is in a lot of pain. Kai explains he saw a cat and Todd and Asher fight over dogs and cats being better. He tells his friends to continue the quest without him and walks home unable to stop thinking about green and blue eyes. Hmm. 
Interesting, write a story about food that comes to life. What could be stupid, stupider than that? I think it's clever, Asher said. It's like those commercials where they give candy personalities and stuff. I'm going to write about corn. I think corn could have a great adventure. That's corny, Todd said. Uh, he sees a clock, a new white clock. The white clock had a face. Not just a clock face, but an actual face. The clock had two eyes, a round black nose, and a wide toothy smile. It appeared to be made of metal, and the face was outlined in black. The eyes are closed. Hmm. I wonder what colour eyes it has. <laughs> by now, Kai shouldn't have been thrown by the sight of one green eye and one blue eye, but he was. So much so that his legs went out from under him and he stumbled. Wait, this isn't right. His baggy pant legs get caught. That wasn't an arm, silly. <laughs> his tall, burly history teacher, Mr. Harris, had come to his aid. He was so close he could see his curly brown hair. Ron, one of the big kids who makes fun of Kai's frizzy hair, is also there being an asshole. Um, how do you get yourself stuck on the stairs? There was no escalator. Kai had fallen off the last two steps of a wooden staircase. The same wooden staircase he'd gone up and down hundreds of times. One of the treadboard came loose. That's what he's stuck on. He's taken to the nurse... Uh, the nurses... He's taken to the nurse's office and his mother, just coming off her graveyard shift at the ER, arrives quickly. Okay. Um, Kai spent the entire evening in his room. He's only locked his door, unlocked his door three times. He opened the door when Malai got home from kindergarten and marched into his room with an armful of her friends, uh, a collection of five plush animals. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Malaya insisted that Kai line up her toys on his top, on top of his dresser. They'll help you get all better, Malaya said. Aw, it's kind of cute. Okay. Kai decides he doesn't want to go to school and his parents let him stay home. The previous year, Kai's parents had dis decreed that Kai was old enough and mature enough to stay home alone during the day. His parents still hired someone to stay with Kai and Malaya if they were going to be out late at night. But they let Kai hang out alone after school, and often they let him in charge of Malaya during the day. After Kai's dad said goodbye and told Kai to call if Kai needed anything, Malaya shouted through the door, Peter and Marge and Bubby and Frukas and Slowpoke will take care of you. Tell them I said so. No way Slowpoke... <laughs> no way Slowpoke is canon to Five Nights at Freddy's. That's so funny. That's great. The big thing was Slowpoke. Sorry if I tricked you into thinking something relevant was happening. Anyway. Kai looked over at the plush... Oh, wait. It's a tan sloth. Never mind. <laughs> Kai looked over the plush animals on his dresser. Uh, it's just explaining which one... Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got a penguin, a mouse, a white teddy bear, a red fox, and a sloth. <laughs> Interesting. Um, he really has been sure he was going down an escalator. Okay. Kai had initially assumed seeing the owl and cat was some sort of stress response from the VR booth. Um, story never calls it an AR booth again. That is that is strange. Whatever. Thinking he'd been on an escalator when he'd actually been on the stairs was more than that. It was like Kai was confusing physical reality with a virtual one. Oh. What if I'm still in the VR booth? Was that possible? That had to be it. Kai was still in the VR booth. No wonder his arms still hurt where Tiger Rock had pulled him. So what now? Well, if Kai was still in the booth, all he had to do was write this out. This is interesting. This is interesting. It's a different kind of twist. I, I, I mean, I don't know what kind of twist it is yet, but it's a different twist on the original Under Construction story, which I really like because I think dealing with virtual and augmented reality is a very scary subject because if you do get stuck in that reality, how do you know when you're out? There is no sign, there is nothing to ever say that you are out of a video game, right? You cannot break the fourth wall. It's, it's pretty impossible to break a fourth wall, right? We could be in a video game right now. We would never know. We would never be able to escape that video game. And likewise, you could, like like in Princess Quest, um, and, and that's where we drew a lot of connections between Princess Quest and Under Construction, you know, um, like in Princess Quest, you know, somebody is stuck in this game through quantum immortality, and, uh, <laughs> and you wouldn't be able to escape it, really, um, realistically. But these stories are kind of 
uh, more chilling, uh, more chilling ways to tell these stories. And I, I really like that these stories exist because it does make FNAF scary again, I think. Or, you know, you, you get what I mean. It, it makes some of the themes very... Ugh, I hate it. Anyway... <laughs> As Kai looked on... Oh, Malaya's plush toys were moving. As Kai looked on in a horrified alarm, Malaya's plush toys began creeping across the top of his dresser. All five animals had their black eyes riveted on Kai. Had their green... Had their eyes been black before? Kai wondered. It didn't matter. The five sets of eyes were grassy... Glassy... Glassy! <laughs> glassy black now, and they were all aimed at Kai. Kai is very certain he's in the VR booth. Hmm... Okay. Right, so they're grabbing his feet and they're grabbing all of his body. Out of the darkness, Tiger Rock's mismatched eyes emerged, glowing brightly. Help me! Kai screamed. Tiger Rock didn't move. He remained in the closet. His gaze locked on Kai's arms and legs. Uh, somebody... <laughs> Not gonna say who, but a theorist on the internet, probably... No hate, by the way. Uh, but a theorist on the internet is probably gonna look at this uh, see closet and connect mimic to Charlie, which I mean <laughs> I mean it's it's that's very crackpot. <laughs> it's very crackpot that I even came up with that. But that's that's very crackpot. Um Kai, Kai closed his eyes tight. He shouted, Wake me. When the pain didn't stop, Kai yelled louder, Wake me, wake me, wake me. Hmm. The plush animals are gone, so was Kai's room. Anything resembling normal reality was gone too. Kai found himself in a surreal whirlpool of spinning colour and chaotic sound. The colour and sound at first appeared random, without structure or meaning. But as Kai concentrated, he began to see filmy ed images within the churning colours. There! That was Glamrock Freddy. Kai could see the jagged edges of Freddy's lightning, or lightning logo. And there... The pizzaplex spun into view. Its current stained glass dome rotated like a top, and then morphed into the pizzaplex, uh, into the future pe into the future pizzaplex is open to the air force field. Sorry, I get angry when I can't speak. Suddenly, a nearly transparent tiger rock was overlaid on top of all of the other colors and shapes. Tiger rock's sparkling robe wafted around all the sensory input, as if Tiger Rock was embracing everything that was happening. Tiger Rock's green and blue eyes pulsed and glistened. His teeth gleamed. He, ke he keeps shouting, wake me, and he thinks he's seeing the VR booth's glass wall. He finds the wall and discovers it, feels spongy and malleable, so he pushes his way through it and ends up on the other side. I need to turn my volume off because <laughs> I got a message. Um, he ends up on the other side. Someone's got... Wait, someone's got... What my insane gibberish rambles are supposed to mean. I've seen two correct guesses in chat. Huh. Oh, okay. So, okay. What is going to happen? A loud, a loud sucking sound filled his ears. A gel-like sensation slithered along his arms. As it did, Kai's gaze focused. Instead of seeing distorted shapes, he saw a real person, a little girl with short, wild blonde hair, the girl holding hands with a bearded old guy. Maybe her grandfather was also holding hands with a strange-looking doll, doll with a bulging eyeball and features that were all wrong. When Kai looked at the freaky doll, his eyes widened, and then he was free. He was outside the VR booth. Kai turned and spotted Todd and Asher. They were at the front of a small crowd of people clustered near the booth. Everyone in the crowd was staring at Kai, and everyone was talking at once. There it is. He's the boy in the glass dome from Nexi. No! <laughs> I haven't read Nexi! No! Okay, well, we're going to be reading Nexi very, very soon. Like, very, very soon. So I'm going to be reacting to that in my audiobook. So that's going to be exciting. And we're going to... Oh, I'm not going to be able to react to it, though. <laughs> so I'm going to be reading that very soon. And I'm going to know who the boy in the glass dome is, I assume. That's very cool. That's very cool that there's another connection there. And I, I, I really, really like it when they hint other stories that are coming in the future in previous stories. I really, really like that. I think that's something that, Fazba, uh, that the Fazbear Frights kind of missed out on, in a way. Like, we didn't really get that much stuff early on that would connect to later on stuff, apart from stuff in the epilogues. Um, but these stories are a lot more intertwined, I think, 
with each other, and I really, really like that. Um, it also means my previous theory about the glitches from Nexi being Mr. Burroughs was wrong, because that this places it on a Saturday when the storyteller actively said it was a Tuesday when he beat the Mimic Head. Hmm. I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. I do care. I do. The booth locked up, Todd said, its voice high, uh, pitched high. You were in there for five hours. They couldn't get you out. Five hours, Kai thought. No wonder the experience went on and on and on. No, no, no. You may say he's still in... No, no, no. Wait. Damn it. You may say he's out of the VR booth right now, but we technically don't know that. We technically don't know that. Okay. Um, Kai looked back at the booth. He blinked and frowned when he saw that the booth's glass door was open. Kai hadn't pushed through the plastic as he thought. He'd simply stepped through the normal VR booth door. They couldn't get the booth to open. Even the best couldn't do it. Wait. Surely not. Is this why it's downing on the construction? Now, let's, let's talk about this quickly. I, I don't want this to be a, a massively long video, but... Is that why it's down under construction? The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, under construction takes place in May, okay, because it's Maya's birthday and Maya was born in May because of her name, or not, her name is Maya because of her birthday, not the other way around. So it is May and it was the opening month. So for this to be true, this would have to happen before May. It is currently spring, which... I mean, it could be possible. It could be possible because it's spring. But it would have to be before under construction. And the storyteller's tree would have had to... Be oh, the storyteller's tree was up for three weeks, which means it has... No, it, it, there's no way... It, there's, it can't be down... I don't think it can happen before under construction. I don't think this story can happen before under construction. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's it's hard. Why didn't they break it? Kai asked, thinking about how it had felt like he'd peeled the booth's walls apart. It's apparently made of some kind of special glass, like bulletproof or something, Todd explained. They were talking about how to destroy it without hurting you when the door opened and you shot out of there. How'd you do that? Hmm. This is 100% the reason, edit. Yeah, maybe the heat at the moment got to me, but I th think this is somewhat valid. Why else would it be under construction? They need to fix the issue with it locking. This isn't cleithrophobia either, there's no smoke. Cleithrophobia also mentions how it's only the group's first time in. Everyone else has got an acquaintance to it. Not over yet, just now. I, I do feel like it's the other way around. I do feel like under construction happens and then they rebrand the AR booth or something like that. And then after that, they shut it down. I just feel like, I feel like there's too little space between the opening of the Pizzaplex and under construction for this to take place in there. I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong, but I don't think this is in the opening days of the Pizzaplex. Anyway. Um, cool. The Pizzaplex people may want to talk to you, Asher said. They'll probably need to ask you questions about what you experienced so they can troubleshoot what went wrong. They can talk to me later, Kai said. Kai has had enough. He goes on the rest of his day, tired yet unwilling to rest. He tells a disjointed, twisty story about how Elliot and a camel rescuing a meerkat from a cave for Malaya. And finally, he gets some rest. At first, Kai wasn't sure what had awakened him. He hears an owl hooting outside. He keeps thinking about the metallic owl but tries to convince himself it's a regular owl. After the third hoot, he gets angry. He tries to go back to sleep, but just can't. He gets, he goes to the window and sees nothing. But then there's movement in the azalea booth. Bush. I'm telling you, he is still in there. He is still in the booth. He spotted a small white owl. That was, that is terrifying. What is that? What is that even from? It looks like, okay. Well, that's weird. He spotted a small white owl peering through the azalea's shiny leaves. It was an average, unremarkable, feathered white owl. The owl lifted off and flapped its wings. In the middle of the night hush, Kai could hear the whisper of the owl's feathers as they beat the air. The sound was comf care. Comfortingly, un comfortingly ordinary. 
Kai started to pull back into his bedroom. So really what we're saying here is that the VR booth was like a lucid dream. I think that's what we're kind of saying. Cool. Erupting from beneath the window like a spouting geyser. Wait, 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 wait. Tiger Rock shot up into view. His glittery robe spread wide around him like giant owl wings. Or glant owl wings. Kai didn't even have time to react before Tiger Rock reached for him. Tiger Rock's sharp, clawed, pat paws latched onto Kai's arms, one paw on each forearm. The pressure was harsh and piercing. Kai wanted to scream, but he couldn't. It happened too fast. In one supernaturally long, strong, heaving motion, Tiger Rock jerked Kai's arms out and away from his body. I told you, you have to like this video. You have to like this video twice because two arms were pulled out. <laughs> Ah, uh, you have to like right now, right now, like, like. Um, it, it was a deal, it was a deal. Um, okay. Totally and completely away, with a squelching wet crack, Kai's arms tore free of their shoulder sockets. Kai's legs went out from under him as he stares out into Tiger Rock's gr glowing green and blue eyes. And just before he lost consciousness, Kai watched Tiger Rock, taking Kai's arms with him, vanish into the night. So where did he learn to pull arms off? <laughs> you know? Maybe, oh, maybe it was mimicking. Wait, 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 wait. I have a theory. At the beginning, at the beginning, where were they when his friend was pulling his arm? Are you trying to pull my arm off? Um... Where was it? He tried to grab arms again. Are they at the storyteller's tree? That's what I need to know. Storyteller's tree isn't going anywhere. What what my theory is, which honestly at this point I th I think might be wrong, but I my theory was that Tiger Rock from inside the storyteller's tree was able to see, was able to somehow see or experience the boy, the one boy pulling his arm. And therefore it copied in the VR experience because the storyteller's tree is connected to everything in the Betaplex, you know? So there would be that connection. So then is it able to see through the tree is my question. Because if it is, then it's getting a lot of um, it's getting a lot of information about humans, right? And and it's probably overseeing a lot of what is happening in the Peterplex, which is not a good not a good thing at all. Anyway, that is an interesting story. Um, a lot less mimic law than I thought there would be. I I actually thought this would be um, kind of like the third. I I feel like this would be the end of the Edwin trilogy. But we've only we we didn't see Edwin in this, uh, and we didn't even like really hear that much about the mimic part of this. It was just kind of like a, I guess it's kind of like a blackbird type story in a way, S sort of. It it was just kind of like supernatural for no reason. Even though it it, it was explained by the fact that that he's in the VR booth, but like it's still kind of like um, it happens because it happens. You know, all oh, all these animals have blue and green eyes. Anyway, uh, very much the same as under construction. So I'm, I'm confused. Is he, is he still in the VR booth? That's my question. Is he still in the VR booth here? Because that's the only, that's the only explanation I can think of unless Tiger Rock has actually followed him out of the, t uh, out of the VR booth, but I don't see how that could be possible. Maybe, maybe it's similar to to the story Drowning. Maybe... Hmm. We have a lot of weird VR stories, right? And they all seem to be connected by the fact that it's virtual reality, so... It, it's all virtual, nothing can happen in the virtual life, but no, it actually happens in, in real life. I don't know, it's very strange. Uh, my personal th thoughts for... Uh, my, uh, my personal thoughts that no one asked for, 7 out of 10 some hearts hit, others don't, just saying. I agree, I feel like this was hyped up more than it should have been. 
I I don't think it was um. I don't think it was uh, it lived up to the hype. Uh, but yeah, pretty cool. Still, I I think seven out of ten. I think seven out of ten might be a little generous, honestly. Uh, like maybe it'll be maybe it'll be creepier when we actually read it in the story, right? When we actually read the story for ourselves. Um, but I feel like a six point five out of ten, six six point five. Anyway, Bleeding Heart is currently scheduled for July third. Uh, Monty within, yeah. So so the next story. So the next story. Is going to be the Monty Within, I believe. Um, no, it's not. It's going to be the epilogue. We're going to do the epilogue next. Which I've heard is very, very good. I've heard this epilogue picks up. So I'm very, very excited for the epilogue. To see what's going to happen in the epilogue. Anyway, I've been recording for quite a while. So uh, I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening or whatever you do with these videos. Let me know in the comments. Do you just put this in the background and listen to it? Or do you actually like watch me, watch me react? Please don't say you watch me react because that's kind of cringe. <laughs> uh, no. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you when we read the rest of the stories. And of course, when we read through Nexi properly. Adios. <laughs> Aloha. What's 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 Hawaiian for bye? Yeah, bye. <laughs>